What's up guys, it's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver, Colorado, and today I would like to discuss the differences between plates and slants. So these are two types of media containers or working vessels. Um, and I would just start off by saying that, so normally you would see slants in a commercial laboratory perhaps in a glass test tube. I prefer to use these sterile centrifuge tubes um, for a few reasons. So traditionally slants are just going to have the pop-off tops or a rubber cork in the old days and these uh, centrifuge tubes have a twist off cap so you can completely seal them which means that this parafilm here is just for extra protection, um, mostly during shipping or when I'm moving my stock um, from one lab to another like I'm about to do. So it's really important to have your backup cultures, which are usually on slants, um, protected from any contamination. So that's the number one factor is like, these have the screw cap. So if you drop a bunch of slants, you're not gonna, risk you know the lids coming off and mixing up your cultures and um causing a lot of headaches um that has happened to me before not um for my own mushrooms but in a previous lab you know it's always good to label your plates on the bottom the auger side for that reason if you're carrying a big stack of plates and then you happen to drop them and the lids go everywhere um, and your lids are labeled, then you're not going to know what mycelium is what, and that could cause, you know, a lot of heartache. So, um, number one reason to use slants is just that they're more secure. Um, they're a little bit more difficult to work with, but they're also um, more sta uh, sterile, I guess, or there's less risk of contaminating them when you're working in a hood. So you notice the opening of a slant compared to the opening of a plate. There's much less surface area for contaminants to enter. So that's another reason to use a slant is that they're less likely to be contaminated. So when you're creating your mother stock cultures, um, you wanna minimize contamination. So one way that I work with these in the hood is I'll tilt them sideways and then use my scalpel to cut, make my incisions and that way the only chance of contamination is that little opening and you know I've had very good success using slants. So I'd also like to note that just because it's in a test tube um, it's not considered a slant. So there's another uh, media vessel or I guess there's another term for uh, a culture inside of a, a test tube. So that would be called a deep so a deep is if you let these dry straight across and um, those are used for identifying certain anaerobic bacteria. So a deep is different than a slant. It's called a slant because when you dry the auger, you put your test tube rack at a slant. Or if you've seen my previous videos, I use little metal rods so that I can really create a nice slant. Um, the reason for the slant is to increase the surface area of the auger um, for, which it, for which it's grown on. So a uh, Petri dish has a lot of surface area. So that's good because when you're isolating or when you're taking wedges, you're gonna get a lot more mycelium per cut on a Petri plate. So that's why Petri plates are used for production, um, for multiplying your mycelium. So it's very easy to cut a lot of wedges out of here compared to here. So pro of the Petri dish is that it's easier to do transfers and you get a better visual. So you can see through a Petri dish pretty easily. You can observe contamination. Um, a, a slant is gonna be much harder. You have to stay on top of the growth as it's you know growing out in the early stages of inoculation for a slant you want to make sure that there's no contamination present so um, it's important to observe both medias but that's kind of the difference in the initial stages of growing your mycelium 
So the, another really key factor for using slants is that it has what is called the butt. So this is the lower portion that is a reservoir for nutrients. So if you look at a Petri dish, it has the same amount of nutrients all throughout the plate. So that means that there's an even distribution of nutrients that are going through the mycelium, which is good because you want each wedge that you cut to be you know, consistent with the, the next wedge so that your production is consistent. When you're taking from a slant, I usually take from the top just because it has the least amount of contamination, but you can see this slant which is about a year and a half old. Um, I usually transfer these sooner, but this is a strain that I don't grow anymore. So you can see right here, there's some signs of gas exchange and um, it looks like the mycelium has started to dig into the media. So it's reaching deep into the, into the butt of the slant to get its nutrients where this plate which is only three months old, you can see that the mycelium is starting to come out over the edge. So this is because the, meat, the nutrients inside the auger have been depleted. So the mycelium is gonna be stretching and reaching out to find more nutrients. Where here, because there's so much nutrients in the bottom, the mycelium is gonna dig down and then you don't risk that mycelium coming out over the edge, which happens um, too many times here in our lab. But you can see right here, the mycelium is starting to come out from the edge of the plate. Luckily we have the parafilm, which will block it for you know a couple more weeks, but ideally I'd wanna switch this over to a new plate and this same you know, Pleuratus species, you can see that it's, it prefers to go deep into the slant to gather its nutrients. So that is another important reason and one of the most important reasons why slants are used for long-term storage. You don't want to come into your refrigerator after six months and then find all of your petri dishes have you know, crawled out of the edge of the Petri dish. It could lead to contamination, like I said. It could lead to insect vectors. So um, it's pretty common that if you don't have a good seal on your plates, you'll find, you know, mites in here or um, even fungus gnats can find their way in. So that's another good reason. Um, a way to prevent that is parafilm, but Petri dishes are not perfect. Um, they're really meant to be used for production and not long-term storage. So that's kind of my spiel on the differences between a slant and a petri dish. Um, you can add, you know, the same nutrients to both. It's good to switch it up. This is a PDA, a potato dextrose. I also use MEA. Um, I also use V9, and I've also used. Um, popsicle sticks and uh, toothpicks as a media supplement to my slants. So I have not noticed any differences and you know, it's kind of annoying to add those to every tube. So that's why I don't use them, but I have used them in the past. And you know, there's some pretty good arguments to why you'd want to put some wood in your slant. But um, you can see from this example here that the mycelium is just starting to dig in right here. So I don't see a reason why you would have to add a piece of wood to that. It's just another step. All right, guys, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more myco mycology videos like these. Share our videos if you think anyone else will find them useful. Um, I'm gonna be doing a Fungi Friday today at our new lab in Castle Rock. So I'm really excited for that. I'm going to be doing some unboxing videos, um, just how I set up my lab, so stay tuned. Usually I'm doing my Fungi Fridays between 4 and 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, you can come on and ask some questions. We're doing live streaming, so it's a really good way to communicate. And I love you know, talking with our um, 
our community about different problems. Like a lot of people ask me, like, why do you even use a slant? So it's a good way to get those questions out. So join us um, Fungi Fridays, and I'm planning on you know doing this regularly now. So um, it helps condense my time into one day a week. Um, I often just make these videos, you know, when I get a chance, and then it takes a while for me to. Um, process them and upload them onto YouTube. So I really like doing the live stream because it kind of creates content right then and there. It cuts my time down dramatically. So stay tuned for Fungi Friday and um, give us a thumbs up. And until next time, much love.